The next question we have is from Sri Yanatma Maharaj. He is asking, what, what is it you see that Paramahamsa Nityananda Swamiji and the Nityananda Sangha contributes most, that is most needed by Hinduism worldwide? And what it is that Nityananda Sangha and Hindus should continue to contribute or need to improve in order to serve Hinduism as a global and a future leader? Well, I think Swamiji is doing so many things, it's difficult to, for me to say which one is the most important. Uh, but I will say that uh, combining the spiritual transcendence with the practicalities of life, the Paramarthika and the Vivarika, combining those is a very wonderful thing that Swamiji is doing and inculcating this in the lives of all his devotees so that they then become ambassadors and through their lives others learn. I think it's remarkable. This morning or this afternoon I was given a demo of the third eye. Young kids, two of them were able to perform uh, something I had never seen before. I saw it once in the Kumbh Mela also by uh, Swamiji's, uh, you know, students. And this is quite amazing. It's quite an impressive feat showing that this very ancient technique works. It's contrary to what medical, what modern science says is possible. So if you look at it this way, Swamiji is reviving old knowledge, bringing it back today giving it value today in today's context and this is the sort of thing that uh, is unique that uh, the the sangha can take over to take to the world and people will appreciate it the next question is from vireshwara maharaj he is asking what do you feel as a thing need to be done to revive Hinduism in this modern era? Well, I think the Hindus themselves have to become better Hindus. And, and it's not about propagating it to others, but basically reminding ourselves, I think all of us need to do a better job. So, in, including Hinduism in your life, being able to talk about it without being embarrassed, this would be a very amazing thing to happen because Hindus are generally avoiding the subject. Most others are quite relaxed about their identity and talk about it. But somehow our people find it a bit awkward to talk about it. Maybe they don't know enough or they, are, they have a complex. So this is the first thing to do is to be able to talk about it, to discuss it, to answer questions, to give responses. And that forces you to research and think. Because if you are go not going to make a fool of yourself, then to give a proper answer, you have to, uh, you have to be able to uh, be sufficiently educated, have enough experience in these discussions and debates. And the more you practice talking about it to other people, the stronger it becomes in yourself. So that's what Hindus, I think, need to do, is in order to assert their identity, and then others will also appreciate it. And then others will learn about it and, under, and figure out what are some of its values that, that can benefit the world. Because when you look at issues, some of the big issues, you look at environmentalism. We, are, we have a unique contribution in the sense that we are encouraged to not depend on too much sensory consumerism, material consumerism in order to have a joyful life. Because if you don't have that, you're just constantly wanting more material stuff. Obviously, you cannot have a, you, it'll have, the consumerism will keep going out of, out of control. And you cannot uh, have a environmental, uh, an environmentally friendly lifestyle. You look at the problem of aging. And while Western medicine can keep people living longer, it's not necessarily happier. They're mentally not in good shape their families are not together. So old family values, spiritual te techniques for mental health, these are very important for uh, an aging population. So you look at some of the methods being adopted worldwide, they're all from our culture. 
vegetarianism is from our culture. So we have a lot to offer and we need to sort of reconnect with our own, uh, our own treasure.